Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 86, Dazzling Demoiselle. Let's see who is dazzling. And today we have Rin and Hu. So Hu's been on, but Rin, you haven't. So do you want to say hi? Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm oh. Rin. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's fine. I'm also known as Kieran White Ribbon on both Discord and Instagram. I'm from the UK and have very much been into Purple Hyacinth since its Discover and Canvas, Canvas days. I also enjoy fangirling with everyone on the server, and I sometimes draw fan arts as well in my own time, and thank you for having me here. It's actually my first time participating in a podcast, and I'm quite excited. Um, oh, hello. So you're here. Oh, sorry. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Uh, hello, I'm Flute. I've been here a couple times, and this chapter had me screaming, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I'm same. so excited to talk about it. So let's dive right in because there is so much awesome stuff in this chapter. So this chapter, um, the last chapter we had was the cemetery scene and March was like, okay, time to get ready to the New Year's Eve party, um, New Year's Eve, New Year's party. And here we are. We have Lauren descending the stairs and there's this table laid out in the dining room with a feast on it with that potted plant that we saw last time. Tristan's at the head of it. You have guests, you have um, Stefan and Will all the way at the beginning. And then you had a bunch of black blurs for people. Lauren doesn't seem so excited to be there because she sighs in the beginning. I get the feeling she's not really into social parties and like, especially this whole social party seems like it's one massive chore for her and for a lot of other people there. It's like something that they have to do because this is what their social obligations demand that they do and it's polite to go there, but I don't know if everyone is really enjoying it. <laughs> And Lauren just doesn't strike me as like a party person in general. She seems much more um, serious or, you know, if she likes to hang out with friends, it's a few select friends. What do you think? I agree as well. And personally, if I were to attend a party, I probably too would be hanging around with my friends instead of engaging with other new strangers. Uh, yeah, I would definitely agree. And Lauren has her neat little ability to tell when someone's lying. These parties probably have a ton of just like oh yes niches and stuff <laughs> just people who are pretending they've got the mask on they're just being fake <laughs> and lying to her face and just pretending to be polite and have good mannerisms but really they're all just terrible people yeah I feel like everyone's just trying to save face mm-hmm Either that or they just, you know, want to be home in their beds. <laughs> That's what I do a lot often with parties. And I, I do happen to like parties, but not all parties. Anywho, so, but Lauren plays the part of good host. And she said, good evening, everybody. Thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoy your stay. And, you know, she gets a lot of feed, positive feedback. Wow, Mrs. Sinclair has grown into, Miss Sinclair has grown into a fine young lady. She looks ravishing tonight. And she is, she's wearing this, um, I thought it was two pieces, but Will calls it a dress, so let's just call it a dress. <laughs> um, you know, it's a blouse on top and this navy thing on bottom, and it has frills in the front, and it looks like it's a open in the back. So, anywho, Tristan says hi, Hawks and William, come in. How have you two been? And um, they're coming in, and they look really cool, actually. Will looks really good. He's wearing um, a bow tie and a top hat, and um, it's very elegant. I will say that. <laughs> And um, Stefan says, as usual, Tristan and yourself, um, Tristan says, work is not giving me one second to breathe, but I'm glad I could at least take this night off and gather some friends and family for the celebration. So Tristan is happy about everyone being at the party. So he's mm -hmm. enjoying himself. Like he's actually happy that everyone's there. Because that's Such not a good idea. man. But it's like his one time he can get a break. Mm -hmm. He deserves the night off. Seems like he likes the people who are at the party like mm -hmm. I don't know maybe it's a social obligation for Lauren and for other people but he seems to be happy with the people there mm. yeah he probably like it is a tradition but he probably wouldn't keep it up if um he didn't enjoy it and so he probably likes seeing everyone because he's so cooped up with work that it's nice to have one night where he doesn't have as many responsibilities and he can enjoy himself yeah it's probably his only chance to see like the people that he wanted to see and you know that one person yes <laughs> <laughs> one yes. of those rare yes. opportunities yeah we'll get there and stefan says 
<laughs> your New Year's parties are always exceptional. Would have been a shame to miss it. So clearly, and it's a lie. Clearly, he does not have a high opinion of these parties. <laughs> I mean, Stefan doesn't want to be here, and I don't want him to be here either. He can leave. <laughs> Stefan, like, I can be in your stead. I can go. <laughs> yes, I will take your place if you do not want it. He's like, I'd rather be home watching Netflix. Why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he says, my, my, Miss Lauren, um, you remind me so much of your mother. And that's true. So she does. he does remind her of her mother. And then this is part is a lie. So growing more and more into the ravishing young lady every time I see you. <laughs> oh. Oh, he doesn't think Lauren is ravishing, I guess. Oh, that's funny. Nobody care about your opinions, Stefan. We didn't ask you. Exactly. <laughs> well, other people think she's pretty, so we don't need okay. his opinion. I mean, his he opinion? looks good in white, but he does look look like the KFC man. <laughs> <laughs> he does. It's true. Sanders. <laughs> By the way, okay. everyone, in, everyone in this cartoon is pretty. Like, I've never, except for the butler, I have not seen an ugly what? person in this cartoon. The so butler. I what? the butler is literally gorgeous like <laughs> he is above kieran and above lauren he's above the lady that we see later down the road he is magnificent <laughs> but yeah by simply existing stefan's opinion is invalid <laughs> poor fellow <laughs> anyway so uh she says thank you so much duke cox and i don't know if you know what duke is like the highest title of nobility <laughs> so pretty high up there and I actually knew this because as I mentioned my husband's into uh, monarchy so I, I knew that from my husband and I, I did look this up before to double check so I don't know if um sophism and, and ephemeris necessarily did that, that on purpose but it is like the probably highest I mean they have the viscount um title for Redcliffe mm-hmm. and so I would guess that they would have um and they've like done research on the hierarchy of police so I would have guessed that they would have done the same for this and part of me doesn't know if Stefan bought his title. He probably didn't because like Redcliffe bought his title. And so it's always like just good to consider. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that he didn't buy his title because like we can make that inference from the portraits that we see like of the other Hawksmen from like 80. Oh, yeah. Is it which episode is it 82? I think it's 82. But he Stefan probably didn't buy his title and that makes me a little happy because he did not earn that title <laughs> <laughs> well he, he does have pretty prestigious jobs which we're about to talk about and mm-hmm. one hopes that he has them because he's somewhat capable i hope uh, but to be fair he probably got a lot of help and a lo- he probably got a ton of advantages from just existing in right. the social class because yeah. you know it would be like harder for let's Nobody. say kieran because uh, Kieran presumably came from Grey Chapel, it'd be harder for Kieran to like become chief of police than it would for like mm-hmm. Stefan. And we see that the two chiefs of police that we've seen both come from rich families. That would so that would be Stefan and Tristan. So it does kind of go to show that high-ranking jobs and positions go to high-ranking people and social um, statuses. And even uh, Dawkin, as we learn later down the road, um, he was Dawkin was able to go to college, and so if he was able to afford college and become a royal advisor, he the Rimesel family was probably also pretty well off as well. Oh, that's interesting. I do wonder. College hasn't really been mentioned much here. I know um, Kieran mentioned in um, the bar episode that he was like, "Oh, you know, traveling was better. You know, working was is better than um, finishing my degree." So, but yeah, I'm curious, like, and maybe, in, I don't know what the college system is in this country. Like maybe college is free. I don't know. <laughs> I, think, but, oh, I think a while back it was confirmed or at least like uh, 13-ish, 14-ish years ago, school uh, school wasn't guaranteed for citizens of Artolis. I think that was given, I think that was said in like one of the um, Snapdragon pamphlets that we saw or maybe Kieran said it, it's one of the two. But yeah, we learned then that at that time, um, many people were uneducated and couldn't afford to go to school. And, and school wasn't like publicly paid for, it was like private. Because you would assume if it was publicly paid for, it would be more widely available, but it wasn't. So that means that people who are able to get an education probably do have 
money some form of money maybe not like you know the richest of the rich but they're like middle class maybe um lower class but not complete poverty yeah and then i mean i know this comic isn't necessarily set in a specific time period but public education is relatively new in general so um it's not surprising that like if it's trying to be 100 years ago maybe but um public education is like what 150 years old maybe so not surprising that it wouldn't be so widespread here Mm-hmm. Anyway, so Lauren says, and we can't tell when she lies. She's like, you know, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to see you again. For all we know, we're going to assume she's lying, but whatever. And then she tells, she winks at William. And she's like, I'm glad you can make it to William and are recovered from last night. <laughs> <laughs> and Will says, it's been tradition for as long as our families have known each other. It would be a bad omen to miss it. You look stunning in that dress, Lauren. Oh, <laughs> so cute. And Tristan says, I warn you, I warned you that being chief of police is no easy task, but your work truly speaks to your dedication. I don't regret my choice of successor. And this is true. So I was impressed. You gave a genuine compliment. It yeah, what make, did you think of that? Um, it does make me think that they might be PS affiliated, like as we see later on. Um, because, and Herman has this whole drama, right, where he's like, where he was mad that he didn't get the chief of police position. And I personally think that there's a little more to the situation than we're really seeing right now. Um, Either like someone sabotaged him or Herman was lured into doing something that like he didn't realize or just Herman tried to help someone and that someone ended up being a bad person and Stefan didn't know, um, which like, butchered his chances at becoming chief of police but I'm starting to think that um Herman was the more qualified candidate for the position but Tristan was chosen over him because Tristan was more loyal to Stefan in the end because like Herman just he seems like a pretty independent guy like he's sort of more on his own we saw um in season one when Loon sent files to the seventh precinct I believe uh Herman was like kind of pissed and he was like we need those files here because like he's like this is the precinct who's gonna get Loon I don't need the help from the other precincts they're just gonna get in the way and so that sort of attitude and that sort of personality just makes me think that he wouldn't be in the phantom scythe and he also just Herman doesn't seem like the dude who would be in the phantom scythe like yes we hate him but he's most likely a red herring and doesn't have anything to do with the PS and just wants to take them down. So I do think that because Herman wasn't loyal to the Phantom Scythe or loyal to Snapdragon, maybe he wasn't Snapdragon, but didn't hop over to the Phantom Scythe. But because Herman- uh, He doesn't strike me as the idealistic type. Yeah, because Herman Mm -hmm. wasn't affiliated, he didn't get the job because Stefan wanted someone powerful in the Phantom Scythe to be powerful in the police. That makes total sense to me. And I actually just thought, what if at the end of the episode, like not, sorry, at the end of the story, we've all been led to think of badly of Herman. And I, I happen not to think badly of Herman because I do think he's just like a rigid kind of personality. And I understand that. But what if at the end, after all this hating on Herman, Herman does like this, he's the good guy in the end. And he does this kind of like saving Lauren or saving Kieran or something because he's actually moral inside. And he's just maybe very, very rigid. Um, and like lives by the books but maybe that characteristics will cause him to you know do like a final sacrifice and save somebody and then everyone would be like oh no but I hated him and then he just <laughs> you know sacrificed himself that would be hella snapey of him like he gives me snape energy I won't lie and I do hope that he kind of is like snape but done like better and no love interest <laughs> no love interest with the mom we can skip that I just want like Herman to be kind of an okay person <laughs> by the end on, cool. I honestly find this theory quite interesting about Herman potentially be kind of a good person. I don't think Herman's a bad person in terms of morality. I think he has personality issues, like he's jealous or he's mm-hmm. angry at Lauren, but I don't think he's like immoral, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I also just happen to think, I think I told you about this Monday for the 84 
four podcasts it was like the first one and we had theories all over the place but <laughs> I do think Herman was involved with Dana somehow like not romantically but like he was her superior and they did have some sort of like I don't know sort of like what March and Lauren have going right now but Herman being a little more rigid and stiff you think Herman had a mentor relationship to Lauren uh I think Herman had a mentor relationship to Dana Oh, Dana, Dana, sorry. Yeah, you mentioned this. Mm, okay. That's a good point. That, that could be definitely creative. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh, it's, it's a reach. And I'm about, I'm going to eventually be clowned for it one day when Herman turns out to die a bad dude. But I'm willing to throw that out there for now. <laughs> I mean, a theory fun. is still a theory, so yeah. could be wrong, could be right. All my, th- most of my theories end up in the dumpster. So what do <laughs> I really have to lose? My <laughs> reputation is already in tatters. It's fun. It's theorizing is fun. I mean, <laughs> I think my theory now is literally the first theory I came up with with Revias, because I don't know, I don't know if you heard me mention, but I'm not like a theory person because I like to just like not think because I want it to be completely surprised. I'm like, wow, I didn't think about that at all. <laughs> honestly, I'm honestly the same like I feel like I'm brainless and the only theory that I came up with which I might talk about it later maybe which is Dakin could very well be Apostle 7 and the person that will betray Lauren oh boy okay well we'll talk about that one whenever you you said you whenever the right time when, do not yes. give me hope do not give me hope <laughs> I do not want this hope that I can somehow revive my presentation theory i do not want this <laughs> I'm, I'm persuading you yes true i feel bad for the like um for as like for context for the viewers and listeners who are not on the discord server back in november we had a presentation night and i presented this theory that tied into who actually killed the sinclairs because um i realized something while reading 66 and suddenly I had this epiphany and it in the theory I theorized that it was actually the royals who were behind um the Sinclair's murder because the royals have a history of censoring the press and they do control the press so they would be able to write whatever narrative they like for the general public the the royals also um, control the police and the police were who responded to the crash additionally I didn't trust Abel at the time I um and I did think he was sort of like a really big snitch on the PS for the Royals um and was actually working for the Royals the whole time and then the Royals um because they're able to control the press and because they like control the police they were able to make a man disappear and that man would have been Robin Delaney because Delaney has no police files no like city files at all he just does not exist and who would have control over um delaney's files that would be the royals <laughs> and so the royals got rid of delaney and then used delaney's body to replace abel's body to get abel out safely from the car explosion okay. and <laughs> it was it would have been because um lauren's parents were snapdragon this is before the 70s arc it would have been because Lauren's parents were Snapdragon and thus in Snapdragon would have been a threat to the royal's power because you know, socialism is not good for the royals. They, again, they thrive off the monarchy and they can't have the people revolting underneath them. And so... How does this relate to Dachan being the seventh apostle? The theory was that it got a little bit convoluted with sake in it and the PS in it because we thought that the police, uh, that the PS was supposed to do it and the PS like claimed responsibility for it. And so if the Royals organized it, but the PS took accountability for it, there had to be someone who was... They were told there was an accident. Oh, I couldn't hear you. I can't hear you. Um, I don't think the PS took responsibility because it wasn't Lauren told that it was an accident. I think when she was talking to Sake, it, he sort of played it off as like the Phantom Scythe. And I think he was, 
did he tell Bella about it? I can't remember. But, but, I mean, but that was probably way later. But like, I think the general mm-hmm. consensus, like what she was told growing up was that it was just an accident. Yeah. The, what, what she was told growing up was that it was an accident. But then I think she learned that it wasn't an accident. And it was sort of implied that the Phantom Scythe was behind it. So if the Phantom Scythe was supposedly behind it, but it was actually the royals who orchestrated it, um, what, there must have been someone who was part of both. And who might that person have been? It couldn't, it probably wouldn't have been um, the king himself because like the king is the king. He has nothing really to gain from taking part in terrorism. And it would honestly just, he would be better off just keeping the system as is. Why is he trying to inspire a revolution? Um, it wouldn't be great for Elizabeth either. She's, uh, she's the one who married in to the family. And so I don't, and we later learn in 86 that, she's not very sympathetic so she has nothing really to um gain either from being part of the ps so that leaves us with dokken who has the most to win by being part of the phantom scythe and that was my conclusion i thought dokken was the leader or apostle seven because he was he helped um organize the sinclair's death and then but then he also had people in the Phantom Scythe kill them off for him. Ooh, so you think Dakin could be the leader? Potentially. Ooh. But okay. the theory did get trashed after the 70s <laughs> arc. We did burn it. <laughs> I miss it a lot. <laughs> that was also the theory where I was like, Sake is a spy master. <laughs> this whole time. I, that is the only remaining part of that theory. <laughs> And I'm clinging on to it. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll get into more stuff. I think some more theories towards the end because... Mm. I'll probably explain so- about the Apostle 7. Possibly mm-hmm. being taken later. Mm-hmm. So meanwhile, um, they just, you know, they're complimenting each other. And now um, Tristan returns the compliment. He says, seeing how hectic things are now, I can't imagine how you managed... The Allendale events when you were still chief. So he was chief during the Allendale events that we just learned. You certainly earned your promotion to army general. And Lauren's like, why do they always repeat the same thing every year? <laughs> and this just reminds me when I was a kid and I would go to adult parties, like of just parties with my family. Um, I'd be like, oh my God, these adults are so boring. They say the same thing all the time. Oh my gosh, you look so beautiful. Oh my gosh, you're so big. What grade are you in? What's your favorite subject? And I was like, just stop saying boring things again. <laughs> So that's what Laura reminds me of. <laughs> that is so true. Especially when I visit my relatives once in a while, they always ask the same questions and answers. Yeah, but it's always like the same thing. It's just over and over and over again. <laughs> yes. But yeah. At some point, like I was always much more direct and I was like, oh, like what's your dream in life? What makes you happy? What makes you sad? Like, um, you know, <laughs> what motivates you to wake up in the morning? And somehow I, I learned over time that people aren't used to answering such personal questions. And um, so I, I become more like mundane. My questions, it's like, oh, hi, how are you? Where do you live? What do you do? But honestly, like, I don't feel like that is a really good way to get to know somebody necessarily. But anywho, but I also realized not everyone likes to answer those kind of questions right away with a stranger. So I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm much more open myself. <laughs> so um, Stefan says, at least now that I'm retired from my functions in the Royal Army, I have more time for myself and my dear Josephine, which was all true. So he likes his wife. Mm-hmm. He likes his time yeah. for himself and his, his wife, which is very sweet. That's nice, which is also nice. You know, like Stefan, I don't, I also, I'm not trust, I don't trust Stefan. Like I, I'm not thinking he's necessarily a good person and he clearly like with the whole dynamic with will like he has this whole ego arrogance thing going on but he can still be a person who loves his wife yeah Mm -hmm. i was clown for this but and as this chapter made me think that stefan might be a little more involved in the phantom scythe than i previously thought (laughs) but um for a while now i've still been on the like train that like (laughs) Stefan still genuinely cares for his wife. I mean, like, he got, like, every single, like, the best doctors in Artalis to come see her, and he's, like, he's trying, and yeah, the part where he it was, like, we have to accept that she's um, kind of a lost cause, like, what, that was a little harsh. I think some people were talking about it the other day. Was It, it might have been on here. I don't remember, but people were, like, 
uh, it was a little harsh and, and I'm like yeah but I think it's been pretty hard for him too like they've been married probably as long as like Raphael is old <laughs> <laughs> so like I kind of feel bad for Stefan that he's losing his companion because it might have been an arranged marriage like seeing how Stefan is pressuring Will with um, Darcy's girl it might have been an arranged marriage but I think they made it work and that's why Stefan is suggesting it to Will because he thinks Will could also make it work with someone if it worked for Stefan it worked for it will work with Will and I think that's uh, Stefan's big mindset and why he's pressuring him so much yeah that makes sense um, and let me say, as much as we love coming here each year, and that part's a lie, so again, not enjoying the party, we yeah. can't stay long, <laughs> we must return to her side. That is true. He does want to return to her side. Oh. And um, I think Tristan says, totally understandable, Hawks. We all wish she could be here with us tonight. And sweet thing, very true. And another car pulls up, and um, the Stefan uh, Stephon says, please excuse us, Tristan. We should go say hello to everyone. Come with me, William. There are a few people I want you to meet. Which is very, you know, Stefan, he's like social climbing, you have to hobnob with the right people, you have to do your duty, say hello. So it's like, uh, he's dragging his son around. I suppose he makes William, William invite us to come over to the party as a networking event rather than a party in itself. William seems to be, I think he seemed happy to come because it's like a family, you know, a Sinclair Hawks event and he seems like he's been coming since he was a kid. But yeah, it looks like his dad is making him the uh, <laughs> network, like you said. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he, of course, he tells him, I'm counting on you to make a good impression. And William's like, yes, father. <laughs> no. Oh. We're child. I would it not doesn't... say yes, father. I would be, I would have run away from home at this point. Just saying. <laughs> I essentially did that, actually. So in real life. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think Will has his own house. I think kim mentioned it a while back oh yeah he does i'm a little confused on his living situation because it does seem like he lives it's it's implied that he lives in his own house but like he seems to mostly like hang out at his parents house so i think i think the maids mentioned that it's only been lately that william started visiting um the hawk's house because of his mother oh I need so it's only so it's only until recently that he started visiting visiting more often. Unless I'm yeah. wrong, I need to reread. My that. memory is kind of blurry at the moment. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I got the impression he lived with his parents, but I'll pay attention whenever I read, look for clues. <laughs> Anywho, um, and Lauren's suspicious. She's like, "Oh, what is his father setting him up for again?" So mm-hmm. she doesn't realize the dynamic between them and is frustrated and not happy about it i don't Um, think lauren would allow anyone to do that to her (laughs) so stefan's like very rigid on appearances like appearances are very important to him and that it does make sense because he is um high class and people you know are supposed to like you know have good mannerisms and such but and i think lauren does believe that stefan is at fault for the reason will is so closed off and like why Mm -hmm. um like the like everything is fine like that was from mid-season one and mm-hmm. she's like when will you open it up and she does think that like Stefan is part of that problem and <laughs> she's right yeah yeah she did she wasn't even privy to the conversation that Will and Kim had which you know mm-hmm. really gave us more insight into him but she realizes it I mean they've been friends for a long time so not surprising yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and you know what's interesting I do like the fact that um, there's different personalities displayed because, you know, not if people would react differently to having Stefan as a father. Someone like Kim would probably blow him off, you know, and never <laughs> listen to him. But Will is is different. You know, he he does try to please his father and follow his expectations. Lauren would also not do it. She might not be as subversive as like Kim, but she would probably just follow her own path quietly. And it's interesting to see like how every character um, really has their own personality. And they're not mm-hmm. just carbon copies. Yeah, the character building is absolutely fantastic in Purple Hyacinth. Just like the world building or the plot, everything just works amazingly. And the characters um, bounce off one another just 
perfectly. Mm -hmm. So now, speaking of character, <laughs> you're gonna door. embarrass me like this. Rin, Rin, your time has come. My time has Take it come. Away. Hear me out. <laughs> I'm gonna embarrass myself like this. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen Dakin Rhymeso since episode 68. I miss him so much. I'm so hungry. My skin is cleared. My crops are watered. Glad <laughs> majestic entrance. Oh. Like literally, episode 68 felt like a wild bag and seeing him again, oh, brings tears to my eyes. He looks <laughs> ravishing in that fur coat. After all, he's the king's right-hand man and, oh, <laughs> a new religion has been made. <laughs> <laughs> he does look very noble with that goatee, I will say. He has nice cheekbones, nice jawline. Agreed, Good choice, agreed. Rin. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Yes, you'll personally take credit for that good. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to. Yes, I encourage that hairstyle on him. When he comes home to me at night, I make sure it is well barbered. <laughs> Who knows? Like maybe like he when he goes to sleep, I'll just sneak in there and then put some wax strips on those goatee <laughs> and be like <laughs> Oh, you don't like the, the goatee? <laughs> no, I do, I do. Initially I didn't, but it grew on me. We're on him too, like but anyway, sorry. The things like, you do for like true love, you know. Huh? The things you do for true love, you learn to accept the parts that you're not too interested in, but you learn to accept. Wow, I admire your selflessness and dedication. <laughs> oh, thank <laughs> you. Do you want to read through these panels? Um, no, you can go ahead. It's fine. Okay, fine. You just want to fangirl extensively. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so noble, majestic looking goatee Dokken comes in and the framing is beautiful. Like, um, I don't know if you, you guys noticed, like it's kind of impossible for the backgrounds to be completely sky. Like when everyone walks in, the background is just sky. It doesn't really make sense. Like there should really be buildings there unless they're on, like on the top of a mountain, you know? Really, there should be buildings like, on the other side of the street, but it makes for a nice entrance and it's very dramatic. So, and the framing is, of course, from underneath them. So they just look great. <laughs> yeah, you do have a good point. Maybe they in heaven. Maybe this is why Dakin is gone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good point. Aren't there <laughs> okay. supposed to be like hedges in that area? Like, I, yeah, I think it's just that? for dramatic effect. Because I mean, yeah. last time Lauren came, I, I'm pretty sure there's houses across the street, you know, like, yeah. or something like this. Yeah, the fence, right? Like, when they walk in, there's like a fence outside their house. Mm -hmm. I think we see it in like um, when Dawkins first arriving, like when they see him through the window, there's a fence. But I think Lauren's house is also more up north. So in the houses up there, if you look at the map, they are bigger and the properties are probably bigger. And so they're a little more spaced out than they are in like um, the central part of the of the precinct where the as we see like with kim the houses are more tight are more tightly packed packed together but if you look out the window like the only way you would get that view is if it's totally on the top like on top of a yeah. mountain and like there's nothing there which i don't think that's the case but it's fine it looks nice <laughs> so <laughs> it's for the aesthetic yeah he's got <laughs> <laughs> it's for so he even says, he even says god yes yeah. <laughs> um so he says it was hard he's like they're like talking you made it and he's like yes god yes it was so hard to escape the castle but here i am so clearly he's a busy person he's like where's our girl Aww. oh oh that like, is so cute i love how he says where's our girl because like he's not like where's my girl he's like where's our girl interest news right there i see you docking i see you <laughs> yes There'll be a lot of references to that R over this episode. Mm -hmm. And he says, Lauren, I'm so glad to finally see you, little Ren. And, you know, when Abe called her little Ren, like she was not too happy about it. But Lauren is totally happy with him calling her little Ren. They hug and she says, you're always locked up in your tower. <laughs> but uncle would have sent the entire APD to bring you here if you didn't show up. So romantic, isn't he? I'm like, wait, romantic? <laughs> when I first read this. And I'm I like, okay, scream. interesting. I, I didn't think too much. I was like, interesting i don't know why she's using the word romantic and then he's like he rolls his eyes like yes so romantic and then she says must be nice for you two to see each other again and tristan's like let's go ahead and grab a drink shall we i don't know if that's like his version of being uncomfortable and moving the conversation along <laughs> but lauren doesn't let him get away with it and she's like come on 
we all know Dokken is really here to see you, uncle. And then Tristan removes <laughs> he removes Dokken's coat from him. Oh, that Hado <laughs> is beautiful. Took my breath away. Gorgeous. I'm screaming. Like when I first read this, I was screaming the entire time. Also, is it just me or is the like lighting a little more rosier than usual? <laughs> in mm, there? You do have a point. Yes. It looks a little pinker than a little more corally than the sort of soft beige lighting, soft golden beige, I guess. I don't know, like what's a like sort of brighter beige? <laughs> it's pink because it's true love. <laughs> Oh, look um, at that smile. I just want a man like Dakin who looks at me like that. They invented true love. This yes. is what they invented true love. True love did not exist before this. <laughs> um, I'm, and... I'm actually so happy for them because they seem to be so good for each other. Yes. I was sad for them because if they're in love and and what they say is true, he said, let's get you away from the doors before your ministers find you and drag you back to the castle. He never sees him. I don't want to have a true love that I never see. I felt so bad for them. But eventually, like, they'll get their happy, they'll get their happy, like, ever after. Oh my god, Rin. I just realized the PH fandom is literally going to tear down the monarchy on our tallest simply so Dokken doesn't have any responsibilities anymore and so Dokken can spend all his time with Tristan. Yes, I will fight with that. <laughs> I will fight. So actually, my, my thought on this was that, you know, they're both adults, right? Mm-hmm. I, adults, um, my like personal planning is generally people make time for what's valuable to them. So I was like a little disappointed that once I realized that they seem to be in a romantic relationship, that like, why don't they spend more time together? That's very sad. I, I mean, they do both have very, very busy jobs, but... I don't know. I'd like to see my lover more than once every couple of months, you know? <laughs> it's but- probably also just like scheduling issues because they are busy. So the times they are free are probably pretty short. And like they are dealing with a massive growing terrorist organization. So I'd imagine they don't have that much free time. Additionally, um, um, Dagen probably lives in the 13th precinct. I think that's the precinct where the castle is located. It might be incorrect. So, and he did come by car and so the precinct is probably a little far away so it is hard to like you know get over and then like find times where their schedules line up perfectly and they can actually meet they are able to call um but <laughs> they otherwise have long phone calls every night they fall asleep <laughs> with each other on the phone <laughs> um, okay i won't lie i did feel <laughs> i was so like I was delightfully surprised when I saw this because people were like low key shipping it before this a really? while. Yeah, um, who ever so, thought about that? That's so cool. Oh, we had the like episode sixty five that that was like the first thing where people were like, "Oh wait, hold up, is this is this a new ship on the horizon?" And we were like, we were high on Doc and Beth. Like at that time, we were like oh, all of Doc and Beth. <laughs> I was part of that as well. Oh, forever <laughs> ashes. What happened to 65 that gave us a clue? It was the phone call, and Doc was like, Oh, oh yeah. do you have a moment to oh. do you have a moment where I can talk with you? So that that kind of started the fire. And then we realized that, like, back in one of the earlier chapters, Tristan said that he and the king's advisor had been in contact, and we're like, Uh huh, I see. <laughs> And then a few weeks later, we had the presentation nice. night, which F attended, and uh, one of our survey members, who I adore very much, gave a presentation on Dokken, mm-hmm. and people brought up... Oh, I um, saw that. I saw. I read that one, yeah. Yeah, people brought like, up Dokken. And reasons why Dokken is, like, I don't know, cool or something, why you should love Dokken, and it's like, Dokken is hot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, was very so, funny. And F attended the presentation nights, and people were, like, talking about Dokken Beth, and then she was like, no, 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 no. It's Dacus Dawn. And that was, and we we weren't sure, like, was it crack? Was she serious? And so we were low-key shipping it, like, on the side. And then we have this episode. And people went nuts. <laughs> Wait, what was the first ship name that they said? Dacus Dawn, I think. Someone said Yeah, Dacus Dawn. Someone said, I think Triskem is also one for a while. Oh my that could be one as well. Yeah. 
that's also funny by the way that's one of the things that like um i started understanding about like fandom has its own certain like conventions and one of them is to give a ship name like by a, use combining their names <laughs> it's not something i encountered before i started reading webtoons really so I, i'm finding it funny like this like loki and the kiwi <laughs> honestly i find it hilarious as well because i'm quite surprised by this ship actually because don't stone me for this footnotes but before Darkest Dawn entered the picture, we were in our Dake and Beth phase. <laughs> a moment oh, of silence. I never thought they were lovers. They did not interact. It's like just it. a crack ship. It's just a crack ship. But I'm, I was so was it invested really? in it. Rim, I was, so, was it a crack ship to you? <laughs> it is. Uh, I'm sure of it. I bet you are laughing at me. <laughs> I'll be the last one standing here. Forget <laughs> ashes. It all started. It all started on stream, right? I think you were there. Yes. Because Soph was drawing episode sixty-eight. She was drawing that Doc and Beth scene, and into you, like still into you by Paramore started playing, and people were going <laughs> nuts. <laughs> and iconic. Then, like, it was iconic. I have so many screenshots, and then like it was one of my last streams actually, and then. Um, yeah, people started shipping it from there. We had the like song playing, so it changed like the dialogue. So it was like as you scroll, it was it was like the lyrics of the song. And then we just blasted the song. So it scrolled down, people screenshotted it. And when the episode came out, so put it on our story. <laughs> so I that's, that story. One, that's one of my favorite memories of being on the server. It is so fun. Mm-hmm. Like initially, was... I was against this crack ship until my friend <laughs> that also did the presentation about dating <laughs> came up with these amazing head Canaan stories about them and I was like you know what sign me up I'm into this guilty pleasure scandalous <laughs> crack ship <laughs> oh boy I should think of my own crack ship I feel left out now <laughs> what should I think of but anywho we we'll get some confirmation here <laughs> what there's a ton you could choose from <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm. Yeah. Um, my guilty as... pleasure Dakenberg crack ship forever remain as ashes oh my empire has fallen but what Dakistan I... shall oh, rise God. I just remembered I have like three main crack ships one of them isn't really crack anymore it's just like it's technically kind of sort of not it's like half canon now because one of the characters actually exists but my three main crack ships are we call it pair and it's supposed to be <laughs> Arthur X, a, a fan in name that we gave the McTrevor kid, which was um, Peter, I think. So like Arthur and Peter, we made it pair. So it was like these two kids and we're like, oh, they would be so cute. And then we have... Um, Trevor kid is called Arthur, you say? The prince is oh named Arthur. <laughs> okay, fine. And the two are like the same age and we were like, oh, the class difference, it'd be perfect. And it would be just, it's just supposed to be wholesome. Um, and then we have Zephlos, which is, which includes another Fanon name. All of these crack ships are Fanon. Um, so Zephlos is Fanon. Zephyr. Fanon is fan canon. Yeah. Like okay. stuff that the fan make, like popular stuff that the fandom makes. Um, yeah. So Zephlos is Zephyr from the circus and Carlos. And Carlos is a Fanon name that we gave to like the, game guy who is like the carnival guy who oh, was like was interacting with yeah like Karen was yeah. talking to about like <laughs> joining the pantheon okay and okay. then so we have that ship it's one of my favorites and then we have <laughs> um Darsara which is supposed to be Darcy x Kiara and Kiara was the fanon sister that we had for Kieran which was this is like <laughs> August she's an old character like she's been around for a while okay <laughs> Kiara. Well, I mean, that would be a good email equivalent of Kieran. So, mm-hmm. or Kiara, I guess. It depends how you say it. We had like Kiara is my character daughter. Like, she's my daughter. I love her so uh-huh. much. <laughs> I have so many head cannons for her. And a whole character. I love arc. the name so much. It sounds so lovely. Isn't oh, yeah. Kiara um, the name of the princess in Lion King, too? <laughs> I think so. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, that is, sorry about the crack ship tangent. <laughs> no, that was that was interesting. Um, I did not think of any of them. I will tell you that. <laughs> so, 
um, back to our ship here, we have um, uh, Dawkins saying, don't worry, Tristan. I intend to stay hidden here for as long as I can. And, <laughs> and the their hand- fingers are touching. <laughs> the hand touch to end all hand touches. Lucky could <gasps> never. Exactly. Lucky could never. <laughs> so thrilling. Gets <laughs> anywho. That was very romantic and sensual. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, did I tell you? I mentioned that I grew up very religious and like I didn't interact with boys when I was um since I was like a kid, and then <laughs> so I didn't touch any guys until I met my husband. <clears throat> and yeah, the first hand holding was like intense, so I can relate. <laughs> so anyway, so we're back at the party and there's more black figures and they're just walking around and everyone's talking and there's like, blah, 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 blah. You see people like words blurred out. They're just socializing. And Lauren's also there socializing. And, um, oh, actually just- for a second, for, do you want to mention one of the background characters looking yes, like? the two background okay. characters that I love. <laughs> so in one of the panels, we see Stefan and William and there's this guy who has these intense sideburns. I mean, they're not that intense, but they're like, they're decent sideburns. And I won't lie, he kind of looks like Hans from Frozen. He does. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that hair color. Yeah. <laughs> and then right below him in the next panel, there's this woman who could... Um, she could step on me. <laughs> she's okay, pretty. she's cute. <laughs> and yeah, um, I have a new favorite background character. <laughs> new favorite background character. <laughs> well, that is a level. There should be a presentation on that or like a vote. Favorite <laughs> background, the background character. characters. I will keep that in mind for our next presentation night. Yeah, mine might Ooh. be the uh, the poor lady who gets knocked out by Lauren at the hotel. <laughs> oh no, she's oh, she cute. But- background character will probably be when I think it was back in season one when Laura was walking in the rain looking sad and then there was a background guy like looking concerned towards Laura there's also uh, Mindy I'm not sure if you remember him but there's like this kid that Harvey carries in the prologue like that Harvey's yeah. trying to protect uh-huh. that kid is so unproblematic I love him so much <laughs> innocent <laughs> the one truly moral character in the story <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so anyway yeah there's a bunch of people and they do have faces so we get to see them and <laughs> lauren finally she's like nodding you know being sociable and then she lo- she side eyes the table and she says <laughs> next to herself i haven't eaten anything other than a blueberry since season one breaking the fourth wall <laughs> icon <laughs> iconic <laughs> mm-hmm poor lauren no wonder she's so skinny <laughs> starving away doesn't eat doesn't sleep huh we know she showers at least once so <laughs> 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 so she eyes this sandwich this giant hoagie sandwich on the table and she smiles and she's like yes absolutely and she looks at it again and it's gone <laughs> she's like my sandwich and who does she see eating it across the room she thinks no we see this guy he have, shoves the sandwich in his mouth and she's like wait and her eyes go wide she's like that's oh actually sorry he's not eating the sandwich but through the guy eating the sandwich she sees a gentleman and a woman and she's like that's mr evans and is that his wife <laughs> but there he is jabbering away with his arm around his cute little wife mr evans from the date and we have a little flashback where he's like wink i'm still not married the audacity to show up at the party the guy who stole her sandwich i want him thrown from the party one for eating lauren's sandwich and two for how he's holding it who holds a sandwich like that it, it genuinely terrifies me why is his whole hand around it why is he not holding it with two like i get you can do it like with one like, why, is, <laughs> why is it like an entire clasp around it like dude you are you all right <laughs> like who hurt you wait we but have to asking the important questions <laughs> Which we should know in defense of this guy it's not like lauren put her hand on the sandwich she just looked at the sandwich for one second so how is he to know he's innocent <laughs> but also he's it i can see the food in his mouth and i'm like disgusted like dude close your mouth while you eat do not just be messy <laughs> <I see. laughs> 
I got it. You got it in for this guy. He yeah. Everything bad. <laughs> and then also Miss Evans, like Mrs. Evans, also a very fine lady, like girl, get away from that marriage. You deserve so much better. She, she could be a terrible human being. We don't know. She looks very cute. Yeah. But like, I mean, Bella's a terrible human being. She's so pretty. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That is a very um, common (laughs) fallacy. Pretty must be good. Ugly must be bad. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it's presented a lot. It's, it's actually my undergrad in psychology and it's very, very, Mm -hmm. very well studied that like attractive people, people assume that they're moral and intelligent and capable and all that. So there you go. (laughs) Oh, that's pretty quite hot. (laughs) But if pretty why hot <laughs> but yeah I love her hair so so much like like that's goals her she has hair goals and um and she's like how did Lauren's like how did he end up here and then she's she excuses herself she's like excuse me for a moment I forgot to tell my uncle something and then she thinks that he seriously needs to reconsider his guest list <laughs> So I guess he has not shown up before. So not close family friend. I am um, another. Just, oh, sorry. What? Uh, sorry. About, sorry for interrupting. Um, did you want to say something else? No, go oh, ahead. Okay. Um, then I'll go. The focus on Mr. Evans, like just this moment here, I find very suspicious because um, it we didn't need it right we didn't need to see Mr. Evans here and yeah it could be played for comedy but everything in PH has a little bit of importance to it like even the butler and Lady A were not just pure comedy they've been used to plant the seed of idea in Kim's head that like someone in Loon might be a woman yeah so comedy still has importance to PH and so while the scene is played for comedy and Lauren's like, how is he here? Like, what is he doing here? Um, my uncle really needs to reconsider the guest list. It does make me suspicious why he is here. And as we see later, the three dudes, um, Doc and Tristan and Stefan, are a little bit suspicious and giving off huge Phantom Scythe vibes. And it does make me wonder, is Mr. Evans part of the Phantom Scythe? And is he maybe one of the new apostles? It's a stretch. I don't think he's capable enough, but it is possible. I think, I, I don't know about what he is, but I do think that he will maybe significant to the story. Yeah, he definitely has some sort of importance now. Probably, we'll this- probably discover that he's even more of a douchebag than we already know he is. <laughs> I can't wait. I hope that we see this, but that by the time the series ends, um, his wife has divorced her because that would just be so satisfying. We start off the series with Mr. Evans cheating on her and we end the series with um, Mrs. Evans leaving him and getting a huge divorce settlement. Like she takes like a ton of his money. That would be iconic. <laughs> we would love to see it. The Here. best character arc of the entire series. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> yes i can see that so lauren asks um this couple she's like are you done with your drinks yes mm, uh, here i'll take care of the glasses which i'm pretty sure like we're gonna discuss the glasses i think that it's like dialogue this dialogue is here for a reason because like lauren's not a waitress you know like i'm pretty sure they're wealthy enough to hire a waitress at this party that usually is like what's done so i don't think there's a a need for Lauren to take those glasses. I do think the glasses might be significant. So Mm -hmm. he says, oh, thank you. And she says, got a dip. And she (laughs) puts like the wine glasses, two of them at her eyes. I think she's just being goofy. I'm not quite sure what she means by got a dip. Does that just mean like I got to avoid crashing into people? Got to, got to hop. I have to go like that. Yeah. Um, She is um, sort of technically a co-host because this is like her house. It's um, the house of Duncan. Uh, sorry, not Duncan. Not yet. It's not Duncan's house <laughs> yet. But it, it is Tristan's house, <laughs> and she does live there. So I guess she is kind of obligated to sort of help out. We do know that she does have a maid, right? They have at least one staff person. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure where the maid is. Hmm, uh, I'm not sure either. She might just be helping out. We're having the day off. 
anyway, she's clacking along. She has heels. She's like, why do I always end up with so many cups? <laughs> yes, Lord, maybe you like cups at the bar over here. That's funny. And On the tarot card. Yeah. So I do think that it is significant. And we'll, we'll I think we can discuss it I won't, <gasps> toward the end ish. Oh. What? Wait, I'm, wait, do you want to discuss the tarot? I think that's true. Here? You know what? Let's, fine. Or, let's, fine. let's talk about it now. Why not? Because I, I did realize something that is making me a little bit suspicious. Okay. <laughs> so the. It, it was like three cups overturned, right? Mm-hmm. In the. Uh, from 69. Hikate was showing Lauren the tarot cards and I think it was like Five three cups. cups are overturned one uh, they represent like disappointment failure and loss and yeah. that would leave Lauren with two cups right two cups, two cups of standing. standing and three three were down and she says that they're it's from the past mm-hmm. and we see here that there are three cups but I actually think that they're supposed to represent the two cups in one cup is still up and one cup has wine in it and that wine looks suspiciously a lot like blood okay wait your theory before you said that what if the three cups that are down are the three people that she lost which are her mm-hmm. parents and dylan what yeah. if yeah, the two empty cups them. are her parents that are or really yes, dead and then someone Dylan. is still alive one of them yes! is still alive that could be yes! it too because oh. red is alive right people blood is a life force so yeah so sorry instead of the two sorry i meant the three it could be the three overturned one of them still has blood in them so one of the three people is still alive yes yes oh, oh my gosh totally this is yeah i agree this is it this is but, truth the other this the other t- big brain time why would why would lauren be carrying like a um, glass full of wine i don't think she had one earlier it did seem like she had one earlier and then she took the glasses from those people why would people give her a wine glass that's still full of wine they wouldn't be done with it right the other two are completely empty like there's not a trace of wine in there so why does that one have why does that one have wine in it oh, for sure <laughs> someone is alive mm-hmm. people Great. were so excited that alexander was the leader so what people were theorizing that alexander uh, lauren's dad was the leader yeah. the other day and that would mean he would have to be alive and so now i'm like oh so now like i'm like is it sorry i either think it could be mr rosenthal or alexander and <laughs> That would make a massively good moral dilemma for Lauren. <laughs> Bad enough that she found that her parents are apostles. If she found that her dad was the leader, mm-hmm. and then for Kieran also, right? Kieran, who's come to care for Lauren, and he personally wants to take down the leader, and then suddenly he finds out it's her dad. <gasps> yeah, cool. damn, family drama. I mean, <laughs> if Alex does turn out to be alive, do keep in mind that in episode fifty-four, I believe like in the attic there was a family photograph right and his eyes was open Mm -hmm. meeting the in-laws just got a ton more complicated (laughs) yeah (laughs) well this will be fun we'll keep this in mind i want to i can't wait to see which if we're correct we could just be crazy and theorizing over literal literal just (laughs) basic wine glasses but yeah this is ph you (laughs) never know (laughs) Well, it's fun. Okay. So anyway, we see um, Dokken looking at a framed photograph of her parents on their wedding day. And he says, ah, time flies, doesn't it? It regrets making, um, and then there's another close up and he says, it regrets, it makes me regret not taking you to the castle with me. So, I mean, that's a level of involvement if he felt responsible enough to, to want to take her and um, raise her. And then you see Rachel and Alexander looking at each other. It's very sweet. They look very cute and young and happy and in love, you know, as they I should on their wedding day. I love Rachel's dress so much. She is mm-hmm. an icon. I want to be her. Like, I know she's dead, but I want to be her. Yeah, like, that looks dress- like that lady that you like, awesome. Mr. Evan, Mrs. Evans, right? The blonde, cute, short blonde hair. There's so many gorgeous women in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, her dress is gorgeous. The sleeves. The sleeves are a bit more period centric. They are they are reminiscent of sort of the later half of the 19th century um, with the sort of lamb chop sleeves. I think that's what they were called. 
and the turtleneck sort of um, collar. The turtleneck is a very popular style in Artalis. So I love the continu the conti continuity. I didn't say that right, but whatever. So I love that in like just the fashion. And also like her veil and the flowers in her hair. And unfortunately it's, they're not too detailed. So we can't really tell what flowers they are if we want to do a flower analysis on that. But they do seem to be holding roses like in the mm. bouquet, which is like, it might be red roses most likely. So that's like love. <laughs> well, you know, if you, if you're the wedding dress kind of person, you can model your dress after hers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so. Jay, can we meet again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, before we start going off on onto theories, like, hear me out. I feel like Dagan is always full of surprises. And I feel like I'm sitting on a roller coaster because <laughs> but already heard this enough from me. Because if you think about it, he got introduced in the webtoon looking like a sexy, lavish, 25-year-old <laughs> hottie, right? Then he's, he's got to be older. <laughs> but, but he, 20, looked, he looked 22. 25. Yeah, yeah, he's anyway. probably like... Um, okay, if, if Alexander and Rachel got married like right after college or around those college years, they would have been around early 20s, I'd assume, maybe like... 24 or 25 and 23 when they had her i remember i figured it out when they oh, right. when they saw their graves oh right that's true so they would yeah they're like right out of college they were young and tristan seems to be around their age i think tristan was the older brother so tristan's probably like he was probably like maybe um a couple years older 30 at most um around that and so now we add 22 years to that so they're like they're most likely in their late 40s early 50s oh, to be mid 40s but yeah i mean he could have been younger but he had to have been an adult in order to adopt and take care of um morin when she was 12 mm -hmm. so he probably wouldn't have been 15 <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean let's say if she was 12 theoretically he could have been 22 like whatever but he could he could be a mere 10 years older than her but i don't think so i think he's a little bit older than that <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah i find him to be a surprising character like he's full of surprises because in the royal retaliation episode when he got introduced he looked like 25 plus years old looked and then he grew up facial hair much to everyone's surprise it's a deal breaker for some but i ended up quite <laughs> liking it on him then another big plot twist. He revealed to be Lauren's godfather during a phone conversation with Tristan. But oh, the surprises doesn't end there. <laughs> Turns out he's together with Tristan. <laughs> it begs the yeah. question: What's next up your sleeves, Dakin? I mean, Duncan. Duncan's skin is like it's glowing. His he may be busy as hell, but he he leaves time for his skincare routine. <laughs> <laughs> and sleep you must sleep because your skin looks good if you sleep or let's just say it doesn't look good if you don't sleep so <laughs> so the one is so pale <laughs> sleep. yeah he does look quite nice i would agree um and then he, he talks more about like the the castle and he says as unkind as that environment is i wish i could have been more present for you oh so yeah he really does care all truths and Lauren says, are we about, thinks to herself, are we about to have a serious conversation while I'm holding three glasses? Again, with the emphasis on the glasses. And he's mm -hmm. like, what are you, and then she said, what are you talking about? You were always here when I was little. <laughs> and with all your responsibilities, you couldn't take me in. So guys, he was there a lot when she was little. Yeah. Was it when, with Tristan? <laughs> like, visiting him uh, a lot? The PS has been growing in size over the years, so it probably wasn't as big of an issue back then. Like, it was still a big issue. I mean, they just did a full-on terrorist attack, like, on a, and killed a bunch of people, but it's growing in severity, like, um, the PS and their danger. So, and Lauren was, like, right out of losing her parents and best friend, so Duncan probably wanted to be there for her, so he did come by around a lot. To make sure like she was doing all right and stuff 
because he's been he's been king's advisor for a while i mean he was back in the edward age edward era like he was advising edward back then and that was 10 years ago so he's been doing this for a while <laughs> yeah clearly he's busy she says like oh don't worry you come to take him in and she thinks yep we are this is exactly what's happening <laughs> talking with the wine glasses and she says besides i have no idea how it could have put up with all those annoying protocols I totally agree i don't think lauren's the kind of person to stand on ceremony and be into, interested in all that i totally agree she would be very mm-hmm. frustrated with a royal kind of life <laughs> she's so lucky she got she ended up with tristan and not stefan because tristan seems pretty chill and laid back and like also docking like she's really lucky she got not one but two like very laid back and relaxed um father figures unlike stefan stefan is a mess <laughs> stefan needs to get some cucumbers and a clay mask on his face <laughs> system but yeah <laughs> and doc and says i'm glad you have you've at least had a normal sorry a semblance of a normal adolescence away from the castle it's mainly why your uncle and i decided it would be best if you lived with him so that's like couple language okay mm-hmm. <laughs> your uncle and i Aww. decided <laughs> your dad and i or your mom and i i right. see you Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh yes or sorry not tristan doc and Duck in, mm. you ain't slick. We see you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem like I don't know about who else knows about the relationship, but it seems like it's quite normal to Lauren. Lauren mm-hmm. knows about it. Lauren says, is the number one shipper. Actually, <laughs> hold up. Like, okay, so in the next panel, it's like, you know, your father and I, is it all right if I narrate this? Because I just said this thought that yeah, goes go down to like the next few ones. Okay, so um, Duck is still looking at the portrait and he's like you know your father and I we were inseparable since he came to Art Hollis for college and that sort of it, I thought that the Sinclairs were a big family in Art Hollis but apparently not it seems like they migrated from mm. some art, other part of the country or another um, country entirely so that might have been a motive for why Alexander was in mm. um, was in the or was in Snapdragon because maybe that the situation between the classes is better from where he's from and he was just appalled when he came to the city so he mm-hmm. wanted change and then Dawkins one. says he met your mother in law school which means we still don't know much about Rachel she might have come from a poor background and that would have also added to the reasons why they were in Snapdragon and since they were lawyers they would have seen a lot of injustices so if like if um the Sinclairs came from out of country or just out of city uh, where the class situation was better. They came to Artalis, saw how bad it was, became lawyers, also saw how bad it was, had Alexander marry Rachel, who was from a lower class and could be like, yo, this stuff is bad. (laughs) It would make a lot of sense why they were in Snapdragon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. And then... (laughs) I was about to say earlier that Lauren is the number one Dakistan shipper, but then we see here that um, in the next panel, Dawkins like, before I realized how quickly time had flown by, they were already married and asking us to be your godfathers. I low-key suspect yeah. <laughs> that Rachel and Alexander, we're they trusted Dawkins and Tristan, but they made both of them godfathers to sort of force them together. They yes. were, they shipped <laughs> Alex and Rachel, they totally they set it. everything all up perfectly yes. from the grave. <laughs> they were like, from the grave. If we're going down, Dakistan is not. <laughs> oh, that would be a great last thought. <laughs> <sighs> but Lauren, you know, she has this burden of knowledge now because she thinks to herself, you know, they're having this nice sentimental conversation, but all she can think about is. Does he know they were apostles? You know, the recent revelation that she's had. And I'm pretty sure he does know they were apostles. Yeah, it's most likely he does. I find it so interesting. I mean, I guess we'll we'll talk about it in a second, but like there's a bunch of shady conversation going that's gonna about to happen. And Lauren seems to me a little bit oblivious and she doesn't seem to be picking up on clues. Um, and I think it must be because these are people that are close to her. So Mm -hmm. I think they're a little bit of a blind spot for her. But I guess let's talk about it after the conversation. Mm. Lauren, you've got to open your eyes. (laughs) But there's also, 
there's also a lack of lies and it does make me think that these guys sort of have to, that they're specifically being careful around lauren because mm-hmm. maybe one of her parents has a lie detecting ability and you know if it was alexander and alexander's the one so alive and alexander's the leader then uh doesn't um, the leader doesn't the tristan know about her ability didn't he mention it to her um he said i i it was in the earlier chapters he was like i know you were always right or like i always believe in like that you're right but it was a lie however he's never said that i don't believe in your ability or i do believe in your ability that and in a recent chapter he was like you always have a like knack for getting yourself in tricky situations and always knowing when something's off and i was like he definitely knows. It's just his wording is very careful. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's talk about it a little bit after this conversation because there's a lot that happens in this conversation. So um, now she just tells him, you sound like an old man, Dokken. He's like, haha, I think I do indeed. And then he looks down somberly and he says, I never thought they'd have to die so soon. That is as an innocent statement, it's just like, oh, you know, they're so young. It was so sad. But if you think about it from like an insider statement, it's to me, it think it rings a bell of like, I knew they would have to die eventually because of their involvement, but I didn't think it would be so soon. <laughs> what do y'all yeah. think? Um, I do feel he might have been a part of the plot to kill them. That was like back in the presentation theory. <laughs> oh, so that like, will break my heart. That would break my heart. I would oh, cry God. if that happened. So very plausible. But you I'm hoping. Keep... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Oh, you can go. Yeah, I mean, I think that even if he did have to kill them, you could say it like a, I know a lot of people say like, "Oh, Kieran's forced to kill blah blah." blah. Um, it could kind of be that situation where he, he, for whatever reason, whether it's him believing in the phantom side, whether it's him being forced to, but I definitely think it's completely possible that he was forced to for whatever reason, be part of the plan to kill them. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that it was just like something the leader cooked up to get rid of the apost- to get rid of them because they were two of the apostles. But like the other pos- the other apostles may have been involved as well. So like, yikes. <laughs> He, he probably would have been against it because he and Alexander were friends and he does say that and it wasn't a lie. And he obviously does care a lot about Lauren and Tristan and just like their family. So I do have a hard time believing that he would act maliciously towards his like friend. I don't know. I'm not surprised because ideology makes people do crazy things and mm-hmm. they, it definitely makes people turn against their loved ones. So mm-hmm. he might have been such a fanatic believer in the Phantom Scythe that he, for whatever reason, whatever the circumstances were, like the politics with internally, that he felt it was mm-hmm. the, the necessary thing to do. Yeah. Um, could he be the traitor that Hecate was mentioning about then? Yeah. Because if you think about it, you may think your enemies are hidden in the shadows, but he is closer to you, more similar to you than you think, Lauren. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, just how similar could he be to Lauren? They both lost the people that they love, like Lauren with Dylan and now Dakin with the Sinclairs. So, what if, what if it's someone who can tell lies? He's more similar to you than you think. It's someone oh. else who could tell lies. It could be that. It could be Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we go back to that theory that he's the leader <laughs> and has the power to tell lies. Like, just like his daughter, it might be him. But yeah, I definitely do enjoy the um, Dokken is the traitor theory. It's a very I can one. see it. I can see it. Yeah, I can unless, see it. Too. Unless we're wrong, <laughs> we can be clowns together. Hey, it's, and- it's better than I, me thinking it was Kieran and writing up like, <laughs> <laughs> writing up, yeah, a ton of words on it. I mean, why why was that theory disqualified? The Sylvie Kieran, no? It's just, it's a really big stretch. Um, So for the podcast listeners who haven't read the theory, 
the other day I wrote a theory that the leader had actually ordered the creation of Loon and Kieran was in on it, but Lauren wasn't. Lauren didn't know. And so basically sort of everything that Kieran did, it was because the leader had sort of like ordered him to do it. And uh, that's why they were going after Apostle 7 first. And that's why Kieran's lead was Apostle 7 because Apostle 7 right now is the greatest threat to the leader's power. So the leader was going to have Loon take down a seven and it was just lauren seems so such a like specific target for kieran it was like wow he got really lucky and like when he was able to propose the deal to her and just all the events that led up to it it just was way too convenient for him to set up or just way too convenient for it to happen by chance and so i was thinking like how meta would it be if it was actually a puppet master this whole time making things convenient like that would just be genius on so in x part and just kind of break the fourth wall a bit because stories are convenient but what if they gave an explanation for why it was so convenient and it fit into the story like my mind would have been blown but it does have a, that theory does have a lot of flaws so um it's not very plausible but if you would like to read it it is in the fan theories room on the purple High synth Discord, also known as the fandom site. And if you look at pinned messages, it is right there. And you in the first part of nine is pinned. Self promo. But yeah, I it's swear, most likely. I swear it's with Dokken your dear likely. Oh sorry. Oh sorry. Yeah, Dokken is more likely to be the traitor than Karen. Sorry, Red, you can go. No, no, I was just saying, like, your theory is pretty good, good, actually. Like, it changes everything if you were to give a reread. Yeah, that's what I also really liked about it, because Purple Hyacinth, the twists change how you view the story. Mm-hmm. So for Archivist Kieran, for example, because I think that's a pretty big one, like, none of us saw that coming, except when we saw him in that office, and we were shocked, but when we went to reread, we suddenly were picking up on hints and just suspicious moments that built up to that plot twist. And there are so many suspicious moments from Kieran and his just unwillingness to give Lauren a lot of information that sort of hints towards him being closer to the leader than we thought and the leader having more of a hand over Loon. Um, one of the mods and I, uh, her name's Lynx. Lynx is positively lovely. She and I, we both had this theory. We came up on it with separate occasions. And then like, we went, at one point, we just both realized that the other had the same theory. And we had this theory that Loon would eventually team up with the leader to take down Apostle 7 because Apostle 7 would have become the ultimate big bad. And then when I was discussing this theory at first, before I wrote the whole essay, <laughs> and I got Lynx there and I was like, Lynx what if remember the loon teams up with the leader theory and she was like yeah um what's up with that and it was like what if that theory is true but it's already happened and laura just doesn't realize because kieran and the leader have been in correlation this entire time i need to do a reread to like do some fact checking and see if i found anything else but right now that's where the theory stands (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's definitely very interesting to think about things from a completely new angle because it makes you rethink the whole story. <laughs> anyway, we shall see. So, um, Lauren thinks for herself murdered by none other than their driver, another Phantom Scythe member. Does my uncle know? He and Doc gonna work the closest to my parents. He's never let anything slip, though. So, again, which I'm not sure, sure if necessarily he never let anything slip or if Lauren didn't pick up on it because he's her uncle and she didn't really think about him like that. And he turns around and he notices them, Tristan, at this point. And he says, reminiscing about Rachel and Alexander. And then Stefan comes over and he says, truthfully, the Allendale tragedy and the days following, uh, and the following horrid days left profound scars on us all. Okay. True statement. Interesting. And he says, many things would have been different had the police and army had the right information. I, from this, I actually get a Herman vibe from everything that he says now. He says, um, I get the feeling that he, I don't get the feeling that he was in the Phantom Side. 
I got the feeling that he was on the, you know, he was the chief of police at that point. And he's, it seems like he's saying, I didn't have enough information. I didn't have the right information. Maybe mm-hmm. he's accusing them of not giving him the right information. As we'll see, he'll say something related to that in a second. And Dawkins says with this glowering look on his face, he says, yes, the outcome may have been very different had certain decisions been more thought through. And here I'm thinking that they could be referencing the old Snapdragon days, right? And then the reason maybe um, Stefan was a reason that the Snapdragon was destroyed, right? And he's saying, yeah, things would have been different. You destroyed the Snapdragon. That's why the Phantom Sect was created. That's why they started doing acts of terrorism. Maybe it would have been different if you or the Royals or whatever hadn't destroyed Snapdragon. Mm-hmm. I also and- concerned to, oh, sorry, you go. Yeah, I think let's just do the conversation at once because we can discuss the whole thing. And he says, with the uncertain loyalties, um, Stefan says, with the uncertain loyalties, that's stressed, of the time, any decision was a leap of faith. So he's saying he couldn't trust people. He didn't know who to trust here. And I think it's an accusation. Showing strength in the face of the enemy was a priority. Okay. And then there's just these glowering looks. And Lauren does pick up on this. She's like, what is this all about? And Tristan's like, come on, my old friends, now is not the time to stir up at Hollis's past. This night is for festivity and hope for a better new year, after all. Falcon says, you're right. And um, he says, excuse us, Tristan. Um, and Stefan says, yes, terribly sorry, Tristan, which is not true. Uh, we shouldn't have argued in front of the Stinkler's picture, which is true. It's interesting that he says that. Is it like a sensitivity to the dead? I don't know. And then he says, they were always exemplary people. Lie he did not think they were exemplary people all the time Mm -hmm. so he probably knew about their activities whether it was snapdragon or phantom sight that he knew about but seems like he has knowledge and then lauren hears that she thinks back to what she heard at the funeral right um there never was an argument we couldn't settle and there's stefan when he was younger and she's like oh or maybe him i never found out what he lied about on that day could it be related but then she decides, and this is, I think, a flaw. She's like, I'm getting paranoid. I need fresh air. And she decides, oh, I forgot to greet someone. And she, she leaves. And I think if I were Lauren, I would stick around and try to eavesdrop as much as I could on that conversation because there's so much information that they're exchanging with each other. And I can't, and she doesn't, she thinks she's being paranoid. I think she has a mental block and can't suspect the, mm-hmm. those people that are close to her. Okay, so let's discuss. Her leaving that conversation was totally worth it, as we will see in a few <laughs> minutes. I mean, I'm big on the theories, but I'm also big on the PH women. So, like, it was worth it in my mind. Her, sure. us losing a few uh, clues for <laughs> what we ended the episode with. But yeah, uh, they, he definitely did know that the Sinclairs were up to some, uh, Stefan was definitely knew that the Sinclairs were up to some shady business. And, um, I do think that before when they're talking about many things would have would have been different had the police and the army had the right information, it does call back to Spymaster, the Spymaster, because originally the bomb attack was supposed to be on the royal castle. And so all the police were like over at the castle instead of at Allendale. And that's why Allendale was able to happen because there was like almost no surveillance. And it does make me think like many things would have been different had the police and army had the right information. It's such a neutral term. It's such a neutral like um, phrase or statement that he could be on either side. He could be PS or he could not be PS. And it was the spy master who said that the bombing was supposed to be at the castle. The spy master got that wrong. And so it does sort of like make us wonder who is the spy master and who is giving their, um, the information? Was the information wrong on purpose? Um, was the information wrong on accident? Did the did it change last minute? Was it always going to change? Did the leader do some like, um, I don't know, behind the scenes stuff and just make a mess of it? And what Stefan says here, the statement that it would have been different, it's so general that we really can't tell if he was against it or for it like the Ellendale bombing so yeah things would have been different had people known that the bombing was going to be at the train station not the palace and then 
Dawkins says, yes, many outcomes may have been very different had certain decisions been more thought through. And at first I was kind of thinking that it, he might be thinking about Lauren's parents, Dawkins in that moment, especially with the, with the uncertain loyalties of the time any decision was a leap of faith. Uncertain loyalties, it, when you think of loyalties, it's mostly between people and if they're and they're still on the topic of decisions so it may have been that Dawkins is referring to the decision to kill off the Sinclairs and because he was against it uh Alexander was his friend and Stefan is trying to defend it here with it was a leap of faith and they had to do it just you know because we they didn't know what their loyalties were and it seems so they like you know they had to show strength in the enemy or in the face of the enemy. And I guess that meant, you know, cutting off toxic parts of the plant so the rest of the plant doesn't die. Oh, I can't really hear you. What do you think of this whole conversation? <laughs> oh, very suspicious. I mean, actually, I'm not entirely too sure. Like, with the uncertain loyalties, who is Stefan um, referring to? Alex and Rachel or Dakin? I'm, I was thinking more of, like, he was on the royal side, like, not the PS side, and he was questioning Dakin and Tristan for being involved in, like, the Snapdragon. Mm. But who knows that's that, that's kind of my thinking but it could totally be that he's for phantom side also like i don't know i mean i i don't know i get the impression that he's more like old guard kind of person especially with his um you know snobbery <laughs> and um want you know wanting things to be the right you know uh people to be the hierarchy and blah 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 i don't get the impression he would be interested in upending that that um system so that's why I don't, mm -hmm. I, I would like put more weight on the side of like royalty versus being in the Phantom side, but it could be. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I definitely agree. Stefan doesn't really have much to gain by tearing down the class system. However, it does seem like the Phantom side, as noble as they say their cause, or as noble as the cause they say they support is, like it doesn't seem like they're going to really hold up to their promises. Mm -hmm. At least the apostles won't. It seems like the leader is still hell bent on it. The leader is still like, um, still cares about that topic, but the apostles don't. And um, I did theorize a while, like this is a long time ago, like just join the server. That was an era. <laughs> um, so I've had this thought in my mind for a while that the Phantom Scythe has a lot of money, but where are they getting this money from? Are they getting it from people? Do they have businesses that they set up? And it would make sense that rich people are supporting the Phantom Scythe as they believe that the Phantom Scythe will eventually prevail. And by supporting the Phantom Scythe now, these rich people will be able to maintain their status and maintain their money in the new world of the Phantom Scythe and be able to stay on top. And it's a, another level of corruption, but... <laughs> I, I was thinking that, and I think Stefan could be could very well be an example of that of rich people trying to bribe their way to keep their place in the world once the once the Phantom Scythe takes over. Yeah, that could be. There are people who like doesn't matter who's in power; they just want to hobnob with them, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. not, and Stefan does Stefan does seem like that kind of dude, and yeah. yeah. I have another thought, but uh, I'm gonna. I just talked for a lot, so. You can uh, share. You guys. Yeah, it's uh, fine. Oh, okay. So last chapter, we had the um, imagery of the angels, like for these three men here. And it does all of this in this conversation specifically. It does make me think that they are apostles. All three of them. And originally I was like, um, but why would Rachel and Alexander, like, why would they if they knew their deaths were coming they would have set up arrangement arrangements for lauren and they wouldn't have wanted her to end up in the phantom scythe size so, so Dawkin and tristan likely wouldn't have been ps because rachel and alexander would have trusted their kid with them and you know they knew that the ps was eventually going to come and kill them but now 
I'm not too sure because it does seem like they are involved in the Phantom Scythe, but Dokken is against what the Phantom Scythe is doing. And Tristan seems kind of neutral right now. We can't tell. Like he's the middleman between Dokken and Stefan. And so maybe they thought that the two were safe enough that even though they were in the Phantom Scythe, the two were still safe enough to uh, let Lauren fall into the custody of. But it's still, I'm still a little bit suspicious and that is the biggest thing holding me back from fully going like, these dudes are apostles. (laughs) And so, but then another issue is there are only so many middle-aged people in Artalis that could be apostles. And it's likely that- That we know. (laughs) Yeah, that we know. Theoretically, they could all be people we don't know, but yeah, Mm -hmm. no, it would- make sense for the story to do that and (laughs) I do hope that we get to go into depth about the apostles eventually because there's just so much intrigue and mystery around them I hope we get to meet a lot of them we probably won't get to meet all of them because there's been like over there there's been at least um 16 so that's a lot of people but there are four remaining from the olden days and there's only so many middle-aged people that we know and so I do hope that we get to meet the four apostles who are originals and also some of the newer apostles because I just their stories interest me and so these three men I think they are three original apostles but who is the fourth apostle in that my guess is Josephine or Redcliffe. But so for Josephine, her illness, we don't know how long it's, how long she's had this illness, but it may have been more recent that it's gotten worse. And so she would have been able to operate as an apostle with her husband. And you'd think it'd be kind of hard to like operate in secret with like your spouse around. So maybe both Stefan and Josephine were apostles and they were you know family business get Raphael in the mix too <laughs> we saw it with yeah maybe that's where he learned it <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean we saw it with Rachel and Alexander like the apostle couples and we're we might yeah. see it with Doc and Tristan so like it, it <laughs> could be so and Josephine is name dropped in this episode so those might be the four apostles the four remaining apostles Josephine Ale- uh, not Alexander Josephine Stefan Tristan and Doc and I do suppose it could be Redcliffe, but I'm also sort of leaning that Redcliffe might be the leader as well, because just like the leader, Redcliffe has been looming over the series from the very beginning. Like Herman mentions Redcliffe like around like chapter seven or something like that. So the two have just been looming over the series so far and we haven't met either of them. So it's just very suspicious, though I do think it's more likely if we went with the Alexander or Rosenthal is the theory, uh, is the leader theories, then he would probably be an apostle. Because, oh, I mean, also the, <laughs> also the circus must be bringing in a lot of bank for the PS. So it does make sense that they would be getting a lot of money from there, especially since two of the Pantheon members do seem to be Phantom Scythe. And maybe even more, but we don't know. My Eurydice was pretty sus. And who knows, like Raphael might be a double spy and that's why he's, he entered the circus in order to keep an eye on the leader's operations. Mm-hmm. Raphael might be the spy master. If he's the spy master, I'll cry because I'll have to say goodbye to my sake as a spy master theory. <laughs> that always <laughs> makes me laugh. <laughs> and maybe that's also why he cut off ties with his family because he knew he was doing something dangerous. He didn't want them to get endangered. Yeah. That is a very good point. Like, that's why he didn't go back. I do think there is more to why Raphael left so abruptly. Mm-hmm. So, cool mysteries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was <laughs> it, like, you know, him trying to protect his family is pretty noble. Mm-hmm. But, like, rip Raphael I... if it turns out yeah. both his parents were apostles. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so ironic. It was like, I have to protect my family from the Phantom Scythe. But then it turns that's out funny. both of my parents are Phantom Scythe. <laughs> yeah. but every time I see Raphael I always get reminded of um, what's his name Uchiha Itachi from Naruto because of the sim- similarities in parallel oh yeah and I think I've said that she 
did pull inspiration. Yes. Right? So. Yeah. Uh, she tells him, I'll see you later. Justin says, don't worry. And then he says, there might be someone else arriving soon. Keep an eye out. I'll come by too in just a few moments. Sure, no problem. And Lauren's like, oh, you know, rubbing her temple. And she's like, who's arriving this late? And by the way, in five minutes, it seemed to, well, I guess we had an interval space that we don't know how, how long it was, but it's nighttime now. A car screeches up in front of the house and this elegant shoe and steps out and this is just like really tall heels. And the drive, the driver says, have fun tonight, m'lady. <laughs> Oh, and wait, sorry, can I narrate this part? Yes. Oh, yes, please do. Please. Okay. Well, sorry. Take it away. <laughs> All right. Your time to shine this time. I have been waiting for yes. this moment since November when I got episode 67. I honestly did not expect to actually see her. Like, I was like, you know, it, it would be cool if we got to see this character, but I'm, I'm ready to see her as a fan and character for the rest of the series like it would be awesome if we got to know her and I really hope that she's a nice person and not like the jerk that everyone's making her out to be because I have faith in this character (laughs) but you know if we got to see her that'd be pretty cool but if we don't get to see her that's all right with me I have my I have my character concepts she will always be in my mind and I will always have my crack ship with Kieran's fan and sister with her and so I did guess though, like if we did see this character, you can, I checked my Discord messages and it's like, hey, oh, what if we saw this character at the New Year's party? And I was right. (laughs) And so, yes, I have a three month long history, which is pretty long because that's as long as the character has existed (laughs) (laughs) for us. I have had a bit of a history with this character and going into this episode, I was like, you know, I should probably expect her showing up at the very end. And so when Tristan said that there might be someone else arriving soon, I was so excited. My jaw dropped just immediately. I was like, it's happening. It's happening. Everything is happening. I I started to like, (laughs) I was like, I'm so excited. And Lauren's like, she's walking away to go greet a guest. And who could this guest be? And why are they arriving so late? I mean, like, you know, arriving late is pretty cool. And Lauren's like, who's arriving this late? And I'm like, I know who this person is. I have an idea. So posted a headless shot of this character on our story. I think I know who this is. (laughs) And then we see the car pull up. It's a screech. And we see the manor and super cinematic and we see the foot step out and I was screaming I started crying I was so excited (laughs) I was just tears are coming down my jaw is down (laughs) my mouth is open I'm in shock I'm elated to see this foot (laughs) in the shoe I'm like it's happening everything is happening (laughs) and it's so cinematic we've got the lens flare in the back and then we see the back of her shoes and her shoes are so elegant. Everything is just these two panels of her feet and they're so elegant and beautiful. And I'm like, I'm crying. I love her so much already. <laughs> and then we see the have fun tonight, my lady. And I'm like, <gasps> and then we get the chin panel. <laughs> we get the panel of her face and her the top of her head is cut off. But we see those earrings and her hair and she has stuff in her hair and it's in a bun and she looks beautiful and her lipstick and the mole and like the I guess steam coming from her from her mouth and she turns and she's I I will thank you for driving me and then you're too nice my lady you don't have to thank me for everything or you don't have to thank me every time and I'm like yes yes queen I predicted it she's such a nice character she's She's like star of the show yeah she's the main character we're living in her world (laughs) and I'm like (laughs) looking at these panels and I'm like oh my god (laughs) and the lighting is just beautiful it's blue and purple and there's the white around the rim a bit and she's just radiant even in this dark lighting and then we go back to Lauren and the TikTok and we're like she's like um, knocking on the door and I'm like shaking at this point (laughs) 
<laughs> and I'm so happy. She, Lauren um, opens the door a bit and we see a creek go open. And we see these shoulders behind Lauren, like the silhouette of a person behind Lauren. And I'm, <laughs> I keep saying this, but <laughs> at this point, I'm like about to throw my phone. <laughs> <laughs> out of excitement and I'm just screaming you can if you like go back to the discord as soon as I saw her I was just spamming her name in the chat like or her oh. last name in the chat <laughs> I'm putting off saying it <laughs> and Lauren's like oh welcome I don't think we've met before and it was like ah! <laughs> and then and then Lauren moves and we see her, we see her chest and her, the bottom of her face. We still haven't seen her eyes. And, and she's like, we haven't, we haven't indeed. I assume you're a Miss Sinclair. Lauren's like, yes, and you are. And I'm, I already know what to expect as I scroll down. And Will's like, oh, you finally arrived. I've been eagerly awaiting for you. And that part is a lie. That last part, I've been eagerly waiting for you. Like, Will, you may not have been eagerly awaiting for her. But I sure have. It's been three months of waiting and it is paying off right now. I will gladly take your place, William Hawks. <laughs> and I scroll down. No, Lady Stefan, just so you can Elena have Darcy. Mm -hmm. And it is this gorgeous panel of a beautiful woman in this beautiful shawl, in this beautiful navy dress. And I am sobbing. I am screaming. I am all over the place. And she looks absolutely ethereal and magnificent. And I can't even describe her with the English lexicon because she is simply above it. She is simply above us all. <laughs> she is an Goddess. icon. <laughs> Goddess. Everything about her is beautiful. Her name is gorgeous my I just I love her so much <laughs> and she's just she's barely spoken she's literally just breathed she's she literally just breathed and she's my favorite character <laughs> and everything was just so cinematic and I was breathless and I just couldn't think all I was thinking about was her like I completely forget about Dawkinson completely forget about <laughs> the apostles and Rachel and Alexander and Lauren and William I just care about her. Oh, wow. <laughs> Purple um, Heisen Who is Lady Nera Alina Darcy. And her name, her name is so pretty. She has no right being this gorgeous. <laughs> Nera. I feel like we uh, should, I feel like we should Google <laughs> what is Nera Alina. Beautiful name, Chef's Kiss. I, her wallpaper. <laughs> This panel of oh. origin, or let's see, Nira. It's name. a Spanish origin, so meaning. Okay, what does it mean? I think it means like royalty or something. I might be wrong. I don't really remember. It's like nobility, I think. Well, if it's a Urdu, Hindu it's name, it's a Spanish origin. Okay. Well, uh, the what I'm seeing here is like a Indian name, and it says radiant, brilliant, full of light. She is that. <laughs> um. Interesting. Yeah, when I look it up, though, it says it's Spanish. So when I look up the origin, mm -hmm. let's see a little about Elena. Oh, it means. Oh, Elena shoot, I forgot Spanish about this. Okay, name. shoot, I got it wrong. So when I search up Nera name meaning, it means this Spanish family name Nera is of ancient and noble descent. That's where I got the nobility part mixed up and is classified as being a habitation origin. In this particular instance, the name Nera is taken from the place named Nera. The etymology of the Galatian word Nera lies in the Basque term Nera, which is, these are all different spellings, meaning bog of ferns, which is a bit interesting. Interesting. And Galena. it does mean, it seems to mostly mean like something of ferns. Okay. And Elena um, apparently it's also means bright shining light, so mm -hmm. that would go with the the Indian reading for um, Elena. Sorry, Nira. <laughs> but that's ironic. That's actually pretty ironic because Darcy means dark, which is ironic because we also have um, Kieran, which means little dark one. 
So Darcy's last name means dark. So it's like radiant, shining, dark. Like ferns of radiant, shining, dark. Like that's, that's really just Darcy. Name, but... Sun is a dark one. Yeah, I didn't look that up. Hey, Kieran's a name? I thought Kieran was made up. Kieran's name means... <gasps> it's a real uh, name. Yeah, Kieran's name it's is a real Gaelic one. Gaelic name. It means uh, dark black Scottish hair. and it means little dark one. Gaelic, but yeah. Wow, that is so cool. Such a fitting name for Kieran. Which is also, again, also ironic because his last name is White. So it's like Little Dark One, Light. So these two have like opposite names, sort of. Like mm-hmm. uh, his first name means Dark and his last name means Light. Whereas her middle name means Light and her last name means Dark. No, I'm not trying to suggest that they're siblings. I've seen that theory and I'm over it. I do not accept it. <laughs> you can get that theory away from me i do not like it. why why do you object to that theory it seems like know. it's emotional it, it for just you it doesn't make sense really mm. also because i was shipping the fan and sister with the fan and sister of karen with her so that would be very <laughs> messy <laughs> but um it also just wouldn't make sense if karen came from gray chapel and um and if darcy i'm gonna keep calling her darcy <laughs> Three months in, three months of conti- uh, I don't know, forever more con- calling her Darcy. Um, it doesn't. It just doesn't make sense for the two to be related. Like maybe they knew each other, but I wouldn't say that they're blood related because, like you know, one of them seems to be born into wealth, while the other was not born into wealth. The other was born into poverty. And maybe, maybe she was adopted, but I do hope Ethical that twins have- separated at birth. <laughs> Yeah. Um, biracial Kieran theories intensify, <laughs> but yeah, I do hope that like we her family is like also POC, so people of color, because that would just also that would just be so fun to see. And yeah, she may have been also adopted by a POC family, but you know, it. I'm not sure Stefan would take too kindly to, like, he probably wants someone of descent noble descent knowing stefan <laughs> something like that but yeah that panel of her had me in tears <laughs> by the way so i because i i watched the streams i didn't know she was coming i knew she was coming but yeah people were obsessed with her in the stream they were like just made the most hyperbolic statements they possibly could i'm like oh interesting like i don't feel that way about darcy but okay <laughs> Yeah, I have been standing her from day one. <laughs> Ever since I knew of her existence, I loved her and I defended her against the Darcy haters. And I have a bone <laughs> to pick with the Darcy haters, especially with the comment section. The comment section. Oh, no, oh, don't mess. start. <laughs> There's don't a lot get of- me started. There's a lot of support in the comment section of this episode. And I don't usually read the comment section of, this- of episodes, but I did just for this episode because I know there are a lot of Darcy haters out there. And I just have. A few things to say to the Darcy haters out there. <laughs> One, leave this girl alone. She has barely existed. She has only breathed, and y'all are already wishing death on her. Like, give her a break. Also, number two, she is not here to be drama for the Kiwi ship. Yes, she will kind of be an obstacle, technically, because of. Stefan's pressure but she is not only an obstacle she is not a 2d character she is a badass she is a queen she is about to help loon take down the leader i can already feel it she is going to be a major significant character to the story and she is not here to add romance drama she is above that internalized misogyny she is not competition (laughs) she is not a rival she is here to vibe and have fun and take down uh, oppressive systems. And she will be a queen while doing so. <laughs> like, you can't just, you can't hate Darcy. Like, if you want to hate someone, just hate Stefan. Mm-hmm. Blame it on like- the people who are forcing her into the situation, not her, because she is still a victim in this. She is still the one being pressured into this marriage. It is not her fault. <laughs> he didn't say anything about marriage. He just encouraged he suggested her. Yeah. <laughs> She doesn't, but she, for all you know, she doesn't even know about it, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't it quite interesting, like, in media, if it's another rival, but it's a male, everyone starts fangirling and be like, oh, I don't know which side to, yeah. to choose. 
But then if it's a woman, everyone's like, oh, don't yeah. burn my ship. It's, it's a lot of internalized misogyny, I would guess. Like people are like, you know, just against her, against other women and like, stop, please. I hate this trope so much of like the other female, sorry, the other female love interest being like a jerk because it's just not realistic in no. my opinion and it's always just a competition for the guy like why are you fighting for a guy a- men aren't worth it men aren't worth internalized misogyny men aren't worth um like being rivals with other girls like we should be holding other girls up not tearing each other down over a dude <laughs> and, I- and i get like a dude maybe like you know a fine piece of man but the internalized misogyny is not worth it <laughs> also i kind of assumed that they had used the word darcy because in pride and prejudice obviously darcy comes off he's pretty snobby in the beginning and uh mm-hmm. supercilious and very socially awkward and doesn't know how to express himself well and by then and we we totally don't like him in the beginning but by the end of the story we come to realize that he's really good inside and he just like doesn't really have great social skills and he learned and he became less snobby and less prejudiced over time right so I kind of assume maybe that there's a reason they chose that name. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we're supposed to start off maybe with a, the impression that she's, like you said, because she's introduced as like Will's suitor from a rich family. So, and the name Darcy, like maybe we assume she's a snob and then over time we'll get to know her and we'll see if there's much more to her than that. The amount of satisfaction I felt reading this episode, realizing everything I thought was true like even down to like my character design um for those who don't know back in November it was like it was the night of 67 when it came out like for free or it might have been like the day after sometime around then I drew a Darcy concept that looked eerily familiar to this Darcy it really does so she had <laughs> she had the darker skin she had the dark hair the eyes were yellow, but she had the red lips. And I did some more character building like lately because people weren't very subtle. And I did start to pick up that there may be a Darcy appearance soon. And so I, it got me back into a Darcy mood and I drew some more concepts for her. And it ended up looking really similar to this. <laughs> so very validating very for you. Of myself. <laughs> Yes, you should be. <laughs> when a prediction came true, it's like one of the feelings feeling. I can't even speak today. Oh God. The validation I felt, and also seeing that, like, because people were like, "Oh, she's probably she she's gonna be a snob. She's gonna be like a jerk to Kim." And I was like, "You know what?" And I I remember like just facing down a few boy in in the server I was like you know what she's probably like a really wholesome person and really nice and really kind and just you know above it like she doesn't care she doesn't she doesn't want to get married to this dude you know what she's probably a lesbian I would guess that she like you know is into the girl she plays she plays the girl in red on the radio (laughs) and you know what I might actually be right with that one one of my few theories to actually become canon (laughs) Everything else may be burning and falling apart, but I'm so <laughs> glad that this one did not. Well, I'm very happy for you because <laughs> I think I think we'll be seeing a lot more of Darcy soon, you know, in the next couple episodes or the story. So I think you'll have a lot of satisfying moments. <laughs> yeah, I signed up for like a ton of podcast episodes after this. Like, I don't even like know which ones will have her in it. But if she is even mentioned, I want You're to running. be there. <laughs> but yeah, so much satisfaction. And the comments, I mentioned this, the comments are a mess. And I addressed it like, let's let's actually get to know her before we start to judge and like start pitting her against Kim because I would guess that she's actually really fun and a total badass. <laughs> but we see her she has a very confident look about her oh actually something i have another issue (laughs) so many people i saw people saying this they were like oh i thought it was going to be kieran who showed up and then like now i'm just disappointed like who is she and i'm like i would have i would take her over kieran any day (laughs) 
<laughs> and I know like I have my prejudice against him but still like y'all a queen just stepped in we should be bowing to her we should be on our knees yeah. to be That's honest in her language that I, that I don't I don't go for because I think I'm very independent so I'm like I don't bow to anybody you know but but I appreciate Maybe I thought the, you liked the monarchy what I thought you were into monarchy no no my husband my husband's very into monarchy oh. so um <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm a, I'm an independent person. I mean, I believe in showing, you know, prop, following the Quran. I'm not gonna like be rude if I'm standing in front of someone and the protocol is to bow. Mm-hmm. But in general, I'm a very independent person. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I I adore her. I would do anything for her. Um, <laughs> some funny again. Back to the comments about Kieran. Some funny things I saw was people legit thought this was Kieran in disguise. No, and I really hope it's not because he would be making a very racist statement if he suddenly like switched um skin tones you know he's tanned he went for vacation why would he show up in this costume but whatever mm-hmm. anyway that 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 theory is crackpot already but mm-hmm. <laughs> honestly everyone is everyone at this point Ugh. <laughs> one of my favorite comments that i saw was i really was hoping the late guest was kiki not some elitist snob who is in our very own Kim Liddell. And I'm like, you know, I love Kim too. And this was in a lot of comments too. They were raising Kim up. And I was like, I love Kim too, but we shouldn't be putting down other girls to raise other women up. If you do that, no thanks. If anyone does that, like to raise me up, I'm going to be like, no thanks. I don't want your support. I'm not going was- to trash another girl for that. Mm. For just simply existing. There was also another comment that ticked me off, which, which said... Oh, I fast passed, but there appears to be no Kieran in this episode. I'm disappointed. And I was so <laughs> mad. Like, as much as I love Kieran, but please. Darcy, I hello. I love Kieran every episode. <laughs> there was someone who was <sighs> like, who is this Darcy bitch? And, I, and then they were like, and then someone replied to them being like, I know, right? And I was like, she is your queen. <laughs> and I said that <laughs> so many times right now, but like. And people were calling people were calling her like a bitch. People were calling her. You know anything about her, like, right? Why would you say that? Well, grow up. You were either jealous, or you have a ton of internalized misogyny. <laughs> Come on, we are better than this. We are the purple hyacinth fandom. We can respect women for simply existing. <laughs> we do not let our own prejudices and our own like hopes of a ship getting together block us in the way from enjoying from what seems to be an amazing character so far mm-hmm. also will doesn't seem to be into her just saying yeah. like i don't also think there's too much her. to worry about will is not going to your hopes of a kiwi ship becoming endgame are not dashed by <laughs> darcy existing yeah, because would... she is radiating the lgbtq energy and will Will is not, he does not want to be around her. Uh-huh. He lies and he says, I was eagerly awaiting your uh, presence. He wasn't. I don't think he's very into her. <laughs> There's this one comment where people were like, wait, hold up. I got to find it. It is hilarious and I love it so much. Okay, here it is. Someone said, at first I thought Darcy was going to be the lady in her butler, but I was very wrong. How could I have mistaken the beautiful lady in her butler? Her- butler for someone like Darcy and then we have the like Pinocchio nose and I was like (laughs) well then (laughs) Lady A and don't get me wrong Lady A and her butler are lovely people and they're beautiful and magnificent as well and they're great characters but Miss Darcy is simply on a whole other level above every single (laughs) other character she is above us all wait wait wait, (laughs) If Miss Darcy was queen, would you suddenly be pro monarchy in our palace? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> but it's not like would be anti monarchy if Dawkins was king either. Oh my god! <laughs> Bringing me into this, <laughs> Dawkins would uh, not Dawkins. Darcy would treat us right. She would get rid of that like social or of that like class oppression. She would be an actual good ruler. Uh, you know, I have to say. We don't know anything about Darcy. We know the only thing I think we could know <laughs> is that she she says thank you to her driver every time. We really don't know anything about her. So. But that's supposed to be the point. When characters with characters, you sort of have to exaggerate stuff because you only spend so much time with them. And this is our first introduction to her, and she needs to make a good impression because 
this impression is going to base our opinions on her for the rest of the series and it's like with Lauren this is how you set up a character and you know if you want to make an interesting character people like say for writers a good tip is when you first introduce them make them do something interesting and the interesting thing here was that she thinks the driver because like she's a rich person and you know when we think of rich people in our tallest we think of Stefan but here she is actually being polite and kind and you know people actually like her like people who work for her are like they're really receptive to her and they really appreciate her and so that already sets her up to be like like we already sort of connect to her and we already like we're already starting to like her and so that is how we set up her character as someone who's kind someone who is polite someone who is probably seems to have a little bit of edge to her looking at like you know just that lipstick so bold and those heels and very confident in the way she carries herself Mm -hmm. she is very assured in herself yeah we haven't met indeed i assume you're miss sinclair like she's already you know i assume you're miss sinclair and so just and then that panel of her she looks a little bit smug like she's proper but I can see her flipping someone off like if needed like yes totally she is she's like an elegant bruh girl if that makes sense (laughs) like she would deck a man she would you know maybe kill one (laughs) but like she is simply above it with her gaze alone huh yeah (laughs) mess with her and you're dead but if you're nice to her then y'all are gonna get along swimmingly um i think this is the perfect way to end the episode with our pan (laughs) to to darcy literally this whole podcast is just me and foot like screaming over our favorite characters (laughs) making their appearance (laughs) Um, I'm glad you got so, this outlet. Oh wait, <laughs> we get to see more of your your loves. <laughs> in, in, my notes, in our notes for this episode, it's hilarious. I will not confirm or deny, but three out of the ten pages of my notes may have simply just been screaming over Darcy. <laughs> but we'll never, we'll never know. But it may have been. It's not like you just said it on the podcast, but yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it was. That was very fun. I was ecstatic. Like prior to starting this podcast, like Foot and I were note taking, and I thought it's going to be something serious until she started ticking up the entire page. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mindy, you could check the, you can check the like fast pass discussion. I was sending screenshots of our notes to like humor the room, <laughs> and okay. it's just really funny. <laughs> Um, I will. chaos and screaming and just admiration for our character for our favorite characters <laughs> but yeah I think that's everything sorry yes. for keeping you for so long yeah I also um it's uh it's program tonight and I, so I fasted today because it's, it's what you do before program so um so I think that's why I'm also like crashing <laughs> oh yeah please get some rest yeah well thank you so much for coming on it was so much fun it was especially thank fun you. because you guys both had your <laughs> fan girl experience so yeah so it was this really was, fun to hear that last part where I got to just scream over Darcy and fangirl over her some of the most fun I've had while doing this podcast oh I'm so happy to do to be doing this with you foot yeah, Ren, this is so fun. Yeah. I really love theorizing with you so much. This is my first podcast and I'm I'm so happy. And you know what? Um, I don't know if you sign up for more or what you sign up for, but if there's ever another one with Dakon and you want to join on, just like add yourself on to whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter sure, if there's already like three other co-hosts, just add it on. We yeah. will take you. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yep. Dakin will show up as like a picture and we'll be like, Ren, you got to come on. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm happy to. <laughs> Anywho, yeah. thank you so, so, so much. It was a lot of fun. It was great to meet you and we shall see each other again. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having thank us. You. Again, this podcast are always amazing and such a delight to be on. 
Same here. Okay. Thanks so much. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Sleep well. Bye. -bye.